Hey, what's up, you guys? Crash and Crusher here, back with another video. And today, I have a transaxle here that I'm walking for my buddy Optimus Mowers on YouTube. Um, check the link in the description. Uh, there's a link, or check the link for his channel in the description. Uh, he has a spicer in his tractor named Optimus Prime, but uh, it's it's seen better days. It's on its way out. So I had this transmission sitting in storage for a long time. Uh, was gonna keep it as a spare um, when I had my MST and my Craftsman, but I have 820s and stuff in there now, so I don't really have a need for this transaxle anymore. This is what I believe is a Peerless 915. I'm not on. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I know it's definitely something because I've never seen a transmission the way this is set up before. You got gear selector in there. You got like a counter shaft in there, and then you have a small little gear sitting in the gas. That goes down in that crevice. Um, but whatever transmission is, which I will verify and I'll post it down in the comments or um, or maybe I'll post like an annotation across the video right here or something. But for right now, it's a Peerless 915 to my knowledge. Um, as you can see, we are clearly unlocked. You can grab one, spin it, that spins backwards. And, but... One thing I had to struggle with, and I would, like, this is for anyone who's going to be doing a welded locker, any sort of locker to transmission, is I couldn't get this, like, spin free. Like, I would grab this bull gear, it would spin about that much, then it would lift up. What you got to make sure of is you can grab this thing and it will spin freely over and over. And you, then you can grab these, spin them, make sure everything spins perfectly, because when you go to weld it and you go to put it back together... Nothing will line up properly, and you'll probably end up, as soon as it goes in and it rotates around, it will probably split this case. I've seen it happen before because of that reason. Um, so, what the plan is now, since everything's all cleaned out, squeaky squeak clean, there's no grease everywhere except for a couple spots here and there. Um, the plan is, we're going to weld it solid. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in here with the welder. I'm going to tack on this... Um, I'm going to weld, tack these gears here to this pin, pull it out, weld it all the way around, and then um, the next part I will explain once I get later in the video. Uh, but for now, I'm not really sure if I can get footage of me welding, but I'm going to try. But we are going to run the transmission over to the driveway, and we're going to weld this thing. And the lighting is going to be terrible because it is night, but I will try my best to get some footage for you guys. All right, let's do it. All right, guys, got you guys set up here. I'm going to try to keep this angle. Um, going to get the ground set up, going to get my gear on, and then we'll weld. All right, guys, we're, gonna, we're ready to weld. Um, when you're welding anything, you really want to make sure you have the hottest, like a really hot setting, because you want it to melt the metal together. You don't want to be just filling it with welding material, but you want a consistent wire speed. So it doesn't stop and go, stop and go, so you can just keep it going. So we're going to try to do this, and hopefully we don't catch anything on fire. We're just going to reach in there, I'm going to tack it, and I'm going to rotate around, we'll tack the other side, and then we'll pull everything out and we'll weld it solid. side is tacked. Oh, the weld didn't hit. Let's tack it one more time. Keep missing because I can barely see. <laughs> I got it that time. Almost, not fully, but. That 
side's done. Get a little extra there to make sure you really get it welded solid. Yep, we got it that time. You can grab it and spin it, that's when you know. So now we're gonna rotate it around, tack the other side, pull it out, weld it solid. Technically we're locked now, just not permanently. So we'll pull it apart, weld it fully, then we'll hopefully it goes smoothly as I'm hoping. Alright guys, there we go. I uh, went ahead and I finished up the welding. It's all in there. Um, I also welded these axle shaft gears to the axles themselves so those don't come off because the, the snap rings, even though there was double. Um, they were not the th uh, as thick as I thought, so I did that. Um, one thing I had to do was remove this thrush washer because when I welded these gears together, this one was a little bit closer to the shaft, um, and it takes up that couple thousandths of an inch. So, but you can clearly tell. I can grab this thing, move it. There's no play, and it spins nicely. So, theoretically. I could throw this uh, trans back together and it's locked like a Lincoln locker. The things, I'll try to sneak the camera in there. It's all welded together. So, you, I could clear do this. But, what I'm going to do is like I did on the MST that I have in my tractor. Well, obviously, I didn't weld that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Um, oh, yeah, one thing. I messed up. When I welded these the first time, I did not take the time to preheat the steel. Since this is sintered steel, and it's been in grease and all this grimy stuff for years, you want to preheat the steel to the point that it turns like a, like a light gray color. Because you want to make sure that all the grease and grime has been burnt off, so it's like really bare steel, and weld it while it's hot. Because that helps make sintered steel good. I did that with the... When I welded these, the axles, I did that, and I re and I heated this up, and I welded over the welds I already did. So hopefully it should hold for him, and as and you can clearly see, it spins freely. I do need to um, still clean this case out one more time because there's still residue in there from when I did the tacks. I'm gonna have to clean it out again when I go to weld when I weld these together, um, which I'm not gonna really take the time. To, uh, I'm not going to film that. I'm just going to weld it and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. There we go, guys. The locker is done. This is the second part to it. I was welding it all together. So you can see it penetrated nice. And I, um, on the center here, it looks trash because I can't really get a wire wheel in there. But the space that was still here, I filled that. I um, added some welds down in these crevices, so this should be a nice solid weld. I just got done with the wire wheel and the um, stone on there. I cleaned these axle shafts out so there's no more slag. I got as much slag off of these as I can, these mating surfaces, so it was nice and smooth. Um, I'm not too, too worried if some slag will fall out in here because this is a grease field transmission. There's no outputs for oil, so we're going to run grease. Um... So if any slag does fall off, it'd be a lot harder for it to go falling through the gears because it's solid, uh, well, not solid, but it's really thick grease. So for now, we're just going to run this in. If it breaks or something along those lines, we'll do a dissection video. But now what I got to do is I got to pop the shifter um, arm and those gears, um, pop them out. Then I got to take the case right here and as you can see there's all these little splatter marks everywhere I got to uh, put this I gotta I'm gonna try to vacuum as shop back as much of this out as I can um, I'll probably go over a couple spots lightly with the wire brush uh, 
got to make sure down in these crevices are nice and clean. As you can see, I got a couple chunks there. And over on the other side, not too, too much got on this side, but you can still feel it all in there. It's not smooth, so. Next part is cleaning, which I am not looking forward to, but it is what it is. Uh, once everything's cleaned and we're ready to reassemble, I'll be right back with you guys. All right, guys, reassembly time. So let me see how well you guys. All right, you can see a little bit, so that's good. So everything's cleaned. The case has been all cleaned out. So first things first is you got this little itty bitty gear. There we go. This is what fell out. This drops into the corresponding groove for it right there. Spins nice and freely. Next, we're going to do the bull gear and the locker assembly. Which is, feels very sturdy. So that is a good thing. So let's play the bull gear. You also want to make sure that when you're reassembling this, that you get all the slag off of this part right here. And make sure you go try to get this top section as clear and as smooth as you possibly can on the top and bottom because those are mating surfaces for the inside of this bull gear same with this side you want to make sure it's nice and smooth you also want to make sure all your mating surfaces for your gears are smooth where all these grooves are where your gears spin and ride down where the bull gear drops in you want to make extra sure those are smooth so put the gears in test them which as you can see spins very good so we're just going to goes this way make sure you put your thrust washers back on your axles like I said I'm only running one on this transmission um, because when I welded it I put the um, gear with the splines a little bit closer to the end of the axle shaft so um, it took up that excess space that the washer did so as long as you if, if you do that you don't need to run them it actually won't allow you to put it together if you did that. So if you're trying to put it together and you're like, it won't go back together, it's not, it's nothing huge to worry about. Just take the washer off, check it, and you're good. Like you said, the walker drops that in there, and that's that spins all freely like it should. It might be binding up. It's binding up ever so slightly, but that's because there's really no lubricant in there. But you can grab it with one hand and spin it. Yeah, right there it hits a little bit. So what I might do to verify is I might take like um like a grinder and I might just go over this back side of the gear just a little bit to make sure um you know it's smooth. Um but if that's not the case, it might be just because there's no lubrication, but um spins nice. Oh, it might not even be in there all the way. There we go. Uh, might need a little bit of tweaking, but we're just going to keep going. You've got what I believe is your counter shaft assembly. This drops in there just like this. Come on, baby. And, all right, just like that. And that's all in there good. Actually, want to make sure it's seats that there we go now when i did take it off it did have a little bit of play in here i'm not sure if that's what it's supposed to or if i'm missing something um but for now we're just gonna run it uh so that all lines up good and all spins nice now the only thing that is missing here is the gear select and that is over there um still being clean so let me go check on that and i'll be right back with you guys all right hit it just like that, counter shaft is out, and uh, or gear select, I mean, uh, it's squeaky clean, ultra clean. Uh, so I'm just gonna drop this sucker right down in the hole. Whoops, goes this way. I think I don't know. No, I had it. Right, goes this way. Just being a little bit of a pain. I've never I don't I never work on these transaxles so
Hmm. Maybe I put this in backwards. Oh, that was right. Huh. If something is acting up. That's weird. Ow. Until I figure that out, let's pull this this out. Set it down over here. I monkey around and try to figure out how this all goes together. Because I've never worked on this transmission before, and I didn't really get a chance to see how it went together all um, fully. Because when I pulled the top cover off, this came with it. Ah, yeah. oh, that is sharp. That is sharp on the finger. There. So I guess I had it right. Yeah, because that gear lines up and everything lines up. So one thing that this transmission has, like the MSTs, the Spicers, is it has, let me show you here. It's got these. It's got a little bronze bushing with that little teeth. It needs to seat or sit down in this groove right here. If it's not like this, nothing will go back together right when you go to put the top cover back on. So be extra sure that these are lined up and they're clocked in the right position. So now, what I'm going to do now, set you guys back up. With that, you got the seal right here. Little rubber O-ring that goes on the end of the shaft right here that the brakes, that the one I just put in, this shaft. So we're going to do that. We're going to slide that sucker on. Make sure that is up against up against it right to the point that should, in theory. Just, yep. Yep. Maybe not quite. Slide it over. So there we go. To the point that it seats down into the spot. And as you can see, that these um, ends are all clean. Nice. It spins very really freely. Now we are going to take this, and then might have to Mickey Mouse it a little bit, but we're going to get it back together. Give it a little... Yep, there we go. Almost got it. Almost got it. Slide that. That might be my issues. There we go. That washer was keeping me. So what I didn't realize is you got to slide on the splines. This is a spline. Slide this gear over so the um, gear that the um, the input on the top drives, which binding up a little bit. That is odd. Uh, I will figure that out, but for now, that's how it goes together. Um, just like that. Nope. Oh, there we go. Stupid camera. Having to use my phone because the freaking GoPro batteries, they don't last... They don't last anything out here in the wind. There we go. Oh, that's why. That wasn't seated. That should. This bronze flange, come on. weird that it's binding well i'll be right back with you guys and i figure it out all right guys there we go um it uh rolls over perfectly um 
I figured out it would, just had to keep monkeying with it. Um, I would show you, but these gears are freezing, and it is freezing out. Um, but yeah, that is how you lock a transmix, um, a transmission. Uh, this method would work for any of the pancake ones, MST, Spicer, um, Peerless. So, uh, this done is almost the same way as that MST there. The only thing that we didn't do on that was do a Lincoln locker when you weld the spiders to the axle and then the axle shaft gears to the axle itself. That is the only thing I we didn't do on that because we only had access to a TIG welder at that time. But now that we have a MIG, it's very easy to sneak the tip of the welder in there and get it um, and do all that. But that one's still holding up. It's held abuse. But um, the um, there's the parts that are in there are a little stronger. Like the um, snap rings on the end of the axles are actually a lot thicker than these. These were very thin and felt very flimsy which is why i decided to weld the um, the gears right solid to the axle but you can see we're welded on all four sides um it's all cleaned up good it works so hopefully this will hold up good for you optimus prime or optimus prime optimus mowers <laughs> for for his tractor optimus prime uh got the top case all cleaned out here uh so hopefully Next time I'm, next time we go riding, buddy, we'll be able to get this trans all together and driving for you. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you like. Tell me what you didn't like. Uh, feedback definitely helps me a lot. Um, let me know if you guys like this method, if you think it'll hold or not. Uh, and Optimus Mowers, this is this one's for you, man. Next time, next time we head out. We'll see. We'll beat the living hell out of this thing. See if it holds. Um, he plans to put 20, 22 by 11 by 8 ITP mud lights on there. So definitely be a good test. Uh, see how my welds hold. But thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one.